Alright, so today's topic is going to be about giants, and I am basing it on this uh, comment from Edward. Yeah, I'll read the comment and then I'll respond. Alright, he says Derek Gilbert, The Inception, Dr. Michael Heiser, The Unseen Realm, Tim Tyler, What is Trending, Are Great Videos to Watch, The Origin of the Nephilim. The Book of Enoch explains the origin of the giants. Hebrew cosmology is a closed stationary earth. 1 Corinthians 11.10 Why use such a metaphor? It is for the reason that a woman ought to have authority over her head because of the angels. So let's check out the wording of that uh, Bible verse real quick. Alright, first Corinthians eleven ten. For this cause ought the woman to have power over her head because of the angels. Alright, so uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I would need a uh, for this gentleman to elaborate a little more on uh, that. Okay, so I want to talk about this origin of the giants. I'm going to explain it very simply. And um, so, first of all, um, it's important to understand that when reading Genesis 6, for example, if you believe that the origin of giants came from angels all right follow me on this you if you believe angels came down and had sex with women and their offspring produced giants yeah I mean, this is this is fairy tale stuff man this is not reality listen you now follow me on this you're saying angels had sex with women they produced giants God said alright I've had it with man even though it wasn't man it was angels that did this horrible sin and even though angels are not born with pee pees and wee wees you believe that because angels came down and had sex with women that God said, all right, I'm going to destroy the world. But then God failed. Because there were giants after the flood, after God destroyed the world by water. There continued to be giants. So God failed to do what he set out to do. And then not only that, why did God destroy man when it was the angels with their imaginary peepees coming down and having sex with women. Why would God destroy man? Destroy the angels. They're the ones that did this horrible sinning according to your angel sex theory. <laughs> it's nonsense, man. It's not reality at all. And if you don't give a dog hoot about the truth you might as well just turn off this video right now I'm gonna make this real simple alright so there were giants in the earth in those days how did they come about well <laughs> it says right here in the first verse doesn't it and it came to pass when men began to multiply well how did men begin to multiply and daughters were born under them how well, how did that happen well you might want to ask your mom and dad alright You've probably heard of the birds and the bees, and if you haven't, ask them. All right, right here it says, It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Okay, so we see problem number one right here. The men were taking wives of all which they chose. It's not one man, 
one wife. This is men taking wives of all which they chose. Okay. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Notice, he's not pleased with man. So, it'd be weird if it was the angels causing a problem. I mean, it's like if I came and beat you over the head and God punished you and not me. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so how did the giants come about? Well, it's very clear that the giants are men. You really can't dispute that. Uh, you really can't because this is consistent all throughout the Bible. You cannot get around it, and you can't. If you even study this at all, the sons of Anakim, all right, tall, many tall as the Anakims, these people, people are men, the people great, all right, and um, Goliath was a giant, and he was a man. You cannot get around the fact. I mean, if you're living this fairy tale, and none of this is going to matter to you at all. All right, and then there's the Og, whose bed was 13 and a half, 14 feet long. All right. I mean, we could go over all these verses, right? The bottom line is, giants are men. And there is no mention in the Bible anywhere at all of Nephilim. Now, see, this is a great gateway uh, gateway word where people say, well, it's not giants, it's Nephilim. And Nephilim are UFO aliens or what it, you know, whatever you want to call them. You make them up to be whatever you want. That's the great thing about changing the Word of God and not believing in the Bible that you hold in your hands. You can say, well, this, this in uh, Chinese Hebrew means uh, Bozo the Clown. So these were all Bozo Clowns running around the earth. And God destroyed man, and uh, but he couldn't destroy Bozo the Clown. Yeah, I mean, really, you're just making up whatever you want. It's lunacy. It really is. It tells me right away that you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. That's very apparent. All right. So how did giants come about? Well, if you think about dog breeding, or horse breeding, or whatever sort of breeding that you want, it's interesting. Here you do a, a you know, like a search for dog breeding, and you come to this website, and it says. Uh, Puppies from dogs of different sizes are likely to be an average of their parents' size and may be limited by the size of a mother's uterus. Alright, so if you want big dogs, if you want to just make the biggest dog anybody has ever had, you take the two biggest dogs, the biggest male and the biggest female, and you breed them. And you continue to breed them. And then you continue to take the biggest of the big and you'll continue to get big dogs that way through that process all right this is breeding uh, this is how they do it in all sorts of breeding you're looking for a particular kind of uh, you know animal you take the two that most likely fit you know the vision that you have for um, you know, for you, what you're going after, right? All right? So you want a fast racehorse, then you take the two fastest racehorses and you breed them together. I mean, that's this has been going on and on and on for a very, very long time. Now, these people in before the flood. They were living 900 plus years, and they had 
knowledge and wisdom and uh, and, all, and all that stuff uh, skillful and, and all sorts of things every bit as much as we are today I'm convinced of that there was nothing new under the sun so they're able to use this without the law of God they were given the opportunity to do everything that they wanted to do and they obviously failed big time so it's a much different world back then and so they would have bred you don't think they were breeding dogs and cats and and uh, horses and dogs and you know whatever people you don't think they were breeding people you think they had morals no they didn't have any morals they didn't have God's law they didn't have nothing but their own judgment and therefore they were breeding people well, you don't think it can be done today? Of course it can. You take a tall man and breed him with a tall woman, they're going to have a tall baby. You take a short man and a short woman and breed them, they're going to have short babies. That's life, man. That's life. That is life. Puppies from dogs of different sizes are likely to be an average of their parent size. It may be limited by the size of a mother's uterus. So uh, there's never a guarantee, but there's a likelihood outcome that when you breed tall people, you're going to get tall babies. Okay. Very simple. And then I just want to show one example. Here's an average guy, 5'10". And here's a NBA basketball player, 7'8". I mean, this guy is a giant. Now if he was two feet taller, you know, just, I'm telling you, if you're 5'10", you're looking up to LeBron, standing next to LeBron James, looking at him eye to eye, you're going to be intimidated. You can see that in life, if you're 5'10", you're standing, looking eye to eye to somebody that's 6'3", they're going to be intimidating. If you're 5'10 and you're looking at a guy that is six foot tall, he's going to be intimidating because he's taller and bigger than you. Now this here, two feet difference is enormous. And in the Bible we get records of people being nine, nine and a half, probably ten feet, maybe even twelve feet tall super intimidating these are not UFO aliens they're not half angel half man and I'll keep repeating this and I'm not letting it go angels don't have peepees okay they don't maybe that breaks your little heart but they don't have peepees and angels aren't coming down and having sex with you and your wife while you sleep. It's not happening. Okay. Alright, that's it for today.